from Shanghai Tech University. Today we introduce Sweep Canvas for quickly 3D prototyping on an RGBD image. This is a co-work with Zhejiang University, Shenzhen University, and City University of Hong Kong. As you know, 3D modeling has a high demand in 3D printing and augmented reality. Conventional 3D modeling tools like Maya and Blender, they support powerful and general purpose 3D modeling. However, they all require tedious labor and professional skills. Our aim is to offer users a simple yet effective way to quickly create 3D models. The models should also fit into the real world. This idea is called modeling context. So we present a sketch-based interactive tool to quickly produce conceptual 3D models atop an RGBD image. On the left is the point cloud computed from the RGBD image, and on the right is our model in the point cloud. Here are some previous works of sketch-based freeform 3D modeling by interpreting user sketches. And here are some works of 3D sketching. They directly map 2D sketches into 3D by lifting the 2D sketches. However, these works do not use any context information. The idea of modeling context is not new. Second skin requires a complete 3D model as input. Insta requires computed point cloud. Smart canvas requires a set of predefined 3D plans, while our input is a single unstructured RGBD image which is lightweighted, realistic, and easier to acquire. Depth sensors like Kinect are cheap and easy to carry, and depth sensors has also been adapted to cell phones. The new iPhone 10 is believed to have the front depth sensors that is essentially a mini version of Kinect 1. It is getting easier to take RGBD photos. But there are still challenges to use, it, to use a single RGBD image. One challenge is to understand the scene, and another challenge is to understand the sketch. For understanding the scene, we extract planes and 3D features like corners and edges. For sketch, we made an assumption that each stroke lie on some spatial planes. We then propose multiple candidate plans for users to select to make sure we get the correct results. And before we go into algorithm details, I would like to show you a short video demo of our work first. So this is the interface. You can create a canvas using two strokes, a profile stroke and a trajectory stroke. You can also select an existing stroke and create another canvas. You can also select two existing strokes and combine them to create a canvas. We use the right button for rotation and the view for zooming and zoom out. And we also support auxiliary operations like cutting and editing to decorate our canvas. And we also use circle for profile strokes. And you can check the symmetry button to create symmetry shapes like the vase. And you can also create canvas from an existing canvas. And on the right side is a candidate panel. And through the candidate panel, you can choose the best canvas that you want. Because there are many possibilities for 2D to map to 3D, so we propose candidates. And then you can also uh, paint the canvas to decorate the scene. And because our image is taken in a real scene, we can compute the actual 3D position from the RGBD data with camera parameters. Right now, the scale of the models are controlled by the users. These are some basic 3D elements that constitute our system. These are called S canvas. The red and blue curves are user strokes. We call them profile stroke and trajectory stroke. The surfaces are generated by moving the profile curve along the trajectory curve. In this image, F is derived using the same strokes in E with symmetry enforced. Here is the animation for creating basic S canvases. Given an RGBD image, we first analyze, in which we extract planes and 3D features, like 
edge and corners from the RGBD image. The second stage is the modeling, in which we create the S canvas. Given the user strokes from the planes extracted from the context, we select a base plan for the profile stroke and the reference plan for the trajectory stroke. We project the strokes on the plane to get 3D positions in the context. Then we sweep the profile stroke along another to get an S canvas. We also consider several snapping cases to make our drawing experience more fluent. Our system also allows several auxiliary operations to enrich and smooth the modeling process, like editing and painting. As mentioned before, we use planes to understand the scene. We also need planes to understand the strokes because we made an assumption that strokes lie on some spatial planes. Like in this image, the red and blue stroke lie on the red and blue plane. To extract these planes from the RGBD image, we use mean shift to cluster the point cloud based on their normal color and depth. Points in one cluster, they have similar color and normal. Then we run RANSAC iteratively in one cluster to get the 3D planes. Besides planes, we also need 3D features to help us understand the scene and find in-context relations. Like in this image, the yellow stroke is snapped to the edge of the table. To find these 3D features, we detect the edge and corner in 2D and then consolidate them in 3D. For 2D edge, we consider it as a 3D edge if it agrees with one of the boundaries of extracted planes. Similarly, for 2D corner point, we consider it as a 3D corner point if it is close to a plane corner. So this process will return a clear set of 3D features, like in the right image. Now I'm going to talk more about the modeling stage. Remember the assumption that the profile stroke and the trajectory stroke, they both lie on some unknown spatial planes. So different choice of planes can lead to different results of canvas. Two strokes on the left image can create a canvas that either lies on the ground or is perpendicular to the ground. For the extracted set of planes and two user input strokes, we formulate it into an MRF labeling problem. Here E is the energy function and P is extracted planes and S stands for stroke. SP is a profile stroke and ST is a trajectory stroke. In this function, we compute the energy for assigning plane I to profile stroke and plane J to trajectory st stroke. In the unary term, we measure how likely a joint stroke lies inside a plane. And in the binary term, we encourage the selection of planes which are approximately orthogonal. And for more details of this function, please refer to our paper. According to the scores from the energy function, we choose top four set of planes as candidates and push them into the candidate panel. The selection process will give us a pair of planes which exist in the context, but the actual position of these two planes can deviate by some offsets along the normal directions. We need to find an attaching point that the base and reference planes pass through. We examine intersection point of the two strokes, see if they are close to any 3D corners. And if not, we search for edges to see if any stroke aligns or partially aligns with any 3D edge. If none of the above cases is found, we set the attachment at the most front point in the local window of the current viewing direction. We rank these plane pairs according to their scores computed according to the energy function. Then we push them into the candidate panel for the user to select in case the desired result is not in the main window. To facilitate more fluent drawing experience, our system supports three snapping cases. First is snapped to a 3D plane. And second is snapped to an existing 3D corner or 3D edge. We can also snap an existing as canvas point. Here we show more operations, cutting, painting, and editing. By editing, you can select the profile or trajectory stroke to edit the canvas. Here is a complete demo of our system.
For the user study, we conducted with 10 participants. Among them, three were experienced users in 3D modeling, four are beginners, and three people had no experience in drawing or modeling. We first teach the users to use our system and give them 10 minutes to practice and try out our system freely. We designed three tasks for the user study. In the first two tasks, we asked them to reproduce the given examples as shown here. In the third task, they can draw freely on our given scenes. This is a statistic of our first two tasks. It can be observed that as the example becomes more complex, the time required for each example increased roughly linearly. The candidate selection operation kept at a small ratio. It shows the robustness of our system. Our system also allows the user to manually specify and manipulate a 3D plane to serve as supporting plane for the strokes. This operation is called plane manipulation. According to the statistic, this operation is also rarely used. In the third task, each participant was invited to draw three examples on top of a given scene. Here are some models created by our participants. In addition, we did a basic implementation of the baseline application. Users need to manually select each plane to draw the profile and trajectory curves without stroke inference. We disable any automatic inferring and snapping features in this mode. Then users has to manually translate and rotate the plane to a desired position. We think this mode mimics the SketchUp interface, which use manual or predefined planes to anchor swept surfaces. It can be concluded from the statistic that such a baseline mode would lead to a longer time and more view change plane selection operations. And because we did the evaluation on a simple example, the time used to create the scene is below four minutes even for manual plane specification mode, but it is still two times longer than our method. Mm, there are some limitations for our work. Because we extract planes from 3D feature, because we extract planes and 3D feature from the RGBD image, um, we cannot create models when a desired 3D supporting plane does not exist in the context, or it cannot be added by our algorithm, like a floating cube. In such cases, the user can perform the auxiliary operation of plane manipulation to create such a 3D plane. Also, remember the assumption at the beginning that the stroke lie on some spatial planes. This assumption allows us to understand the user's sketch. Thus, we cannot handle cases that the trajectory curve doesn't lie on some spatial plane, like the spring, which has a spiral trajectory curve. To conclude, we introduce an effective sketch-based in-context modeling system. We also present a plane extraction algorithm for RGBD images and an optimization algorithm for automatic inference of 3D strokes from pair of 2D strokes. In the future, we plan to experiment with more different media, such as single images or videos. We also believe such modeling tools can be adapted to other applications like VR and AR. And we thank the reviewers and many user study participants and the fundings. Thank you for your attention. Uh, so, uh, nice work. So it seems you only add something to existing scene, and you do not allow user to modify existing depth image, right? Uh, I'm sorry? <laughs> can you edit the depth image? We can edit the uh, canvas, if you mean that. Well, uh, what I mean, it remove existing chair or rescale existing uh, chair? If, the, if there is something existing in the scene, we cannot remove it because we compute that from the point cloud, so it's in the context. We can add something in, in the scene. So, yeah, just suggestion. Might be interesting if you can also edit existing yeah, yeah. things. Yeah, yeah. Hi, uh, Tim Dwyer, Monash University. Um, so your study was done with a mouse, is that correct? The input device that the, that the participants used was a mouse, or was it a... Yeah. 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 Um, do you think it would make... Would it be more fluid using a, a pen interface or some other type of device? Yeah, we have tried to use a stylus pen, and 
Mm, in our user study, there are people who use, uh, uh, they can choose to use a mouse or stylus pen based on their familiar, uh, but we use the right button for rotating the thing, so it's better to use a mouse. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, yes, that's uh, a good question. We actually consider uh, extracting curved surfaces, and because uh, tr right now only the planes, uh, the planes cannot create very complex models. In our lacking the limitation, we, if we uh, if we choose curved surfaces, we can create more complex models. We are doing that in our future work. Okay. 